Hey villagers, cozy up, cause today we're making beds. Hi friends. I know that sometimes bringing home a new friend, familiar or fae, can be kind of daunting. So I wanted to dispel all that for you. And today we're going to be making beds from Dollar Store materials. When you move, what's the first thing you unpack? You make sure your bed is set up that first night. Okay, so we wanna make sure that our new friends have a nice cozy place to stay on their first night in their new home. You don't need super expensive or specialty materials in order to make good and fun crafts. So, if you don't have a local dollar store, I specifically went to Dollar Tree, then I have a shopping list of everything that you'll need below in order to create the crafts you see today. Okay, let's get started. Our first project is the budding bed, since it's a single sized bed good for one small fairy. For both our projects today, our main materials will be wooden clothespins, and I found a pack of 30 for about a dollar. The way we're going to use them is by separating both halves of the clothespin from its little metal spring part. They aren't glued or anything, so a little tug will separate them easily. The base of our first bed is going to be this wooden dollar store golf game, taking care to save the little game pieces for future use. If you can't find this golf game or something similar at your dollar store, all you really need is something flat and fairly rigid. A hardcover book cover, small clipboard picture frame, use your imagination. Fairies love using odd human objects to decorate their homes. Figure out how high off the floor you want your bed to be and mark it with a pencil onto a clothespin half. Then use that half to mark an additional eight halves or four clothespins. Use something flat to level all the pins to make sure to get an equal measurement across all of them. We are going to use tacky glue to affix our bed posts, which can also be found at the dollar store for, you guessed it, a dollar. I like to put glue on both parts of whatever I'm gluing. I feel it gives better adhesion this way. Glue four bed posts around your base, one at each corner, and wipe off any excess glue. Now that we've let those bed posts dry, we will be taking our last four clothespin halves and using them to make a solid headboard. Make sure they are fairly evenly spaced or they'll look wonky. Also, be patient because tacky glue does not dry instantly. I used a little hot glue on the bottom to make sure I had a strong bond and also because I'm impatient. <laughs> Using a couple toothpicks, we will add two bars to the notches of the clothespins to make a footboard. Let everything dry super well. Time for paint! I chose two shades of lilac and lavender. I like mixing two paint colors together to get a little variation in color. 
You could keep this bed a solid color or paint it in multiple colors or add embellishments. I chose to keep it super simple this time. The plain wood is very absorbent, so you may need to do a few coats and then set it aside to dry. Now we can't have a bed without a mattress. I'm using this new kitchen sponge from the Dollar Tree. I decided it was a little too thick so I ripped the scrubby bit off to make the mattress a little thinner. This is purely personal preference. Also don't honk out on this sponge because you can rip through it very easily. If you can't find a sponge, anything soft or squishy will do. Shoe insoles, bean bags, again, use your imagination. Measure the size of your bed base so you can cut your mattress to match. And you can use a pair of sharp scissors to cut the sponge. Now make sure to snip the corners down because when we cover this sponge, the corners will then be rounded and won't stick out. Nice and squishy. Now we are going to cover this bed using a soft yellow cotton washcloth. Really any textile will do, and there's a surprising amount of options at the Dollar Tree. Towels, bibs, bandanas, socks, bags, again, use your imagination. Lay your mattress down on your washcloth and cut around the outside edge, leaving about an inch and a half so we can fold it over and glue it. Cut square notches out of the corners so there won't be any bulky fabric once we fold it. And then glue that sucker to the sponge using a hot glue gun. Make sure to get the corners and trim any excess. For our pillow, I found these foam hair rollers, which make perfectly squishy pillows once we cover it in our chosen fabric. Cut out a piece large enough to cover the roller and hot glue it down, trimming the excess.
Now we have a super squishy mattress and pillow. Let's add them to the bed. It's a simple, perfect bed project for a new friend. Okay, I know what you're thinking. What if we can't find a golf board or similar? Don't worry, I thought of that. Our next project is the bloom bed, a small familiar bed crafted from, you guessed it, clothespins. Separate them from the springy bit just like before and you'll need about nine of them. This time we'll be gluing them back to back, so grab that tacky glue. And here's the shape we'll be using in this design. The base of the bed will be made using both clothespins and popsicle sticks. Measure the preferred width of your bed and mark it with a pencil. Then use the same marks to measure seven total popsicle sticks. To quickly and easily chop the sticks, I use a pair of wire cutters or diagonal cutters, and some dollar stores actually have them. Otherwise, an X-Acto blade or utility knife should work just fine. Since cutting the sticks leaves the ends a little scraggly, we are going to use a dollar store nail file to sand them down and smooth them. Now it's time to assemble the bed frame. I admittedly struggled a little with this part because I wanted the glue to dry way faster than it actually did. I prefer using tacky glue because it has a stronger hold over hot glue, but I need to work on my patience, so I just put it aside and don't touch it. Figure out the height of the bed frame and mark it on all four of our bed posts. To assemble the headboard and footboard, we are taking one of our popsicle sticks and gluing it on top of two bed posts. Then set it aside to dry. Don't touch it.
See, I was too impatient. To finish the bed frame, we are gluing down the rest of our popsicle sticks to make it stronger. Now let it all dry. No touchy. To finish off the headboard, we are gluing three of our clothespin pieces together in a sort of fan shape. While that's drying, we are going to work on the mattress for this bed. The procedure we're using is pretty much the same as the first one, but this time we'll be using things rescued from the trash and recycling bin, specifically a bubble mailer and some packing foam. Using our bed frame as a guide, we are going to cut out a shape that will fit nicely. I used one layer of bubble mailer and two layers of foam to make it nice and squishy. A word of caution. My glue gun was so hot that it melted the foam, <laughs> so use a low temperature one or a different glue. My glue gun has two temperature settings and you can find it in the Village Tool Shed page on my website and I'll be sure to link it below. This time, instead of using dollar store textiles, I'm using some fabrics from my stash. Fat quarters can be found at some dollar stores and even at craft stores or big box stores, they can usually be found for less than $2 a piece. Glue around all the edges to make sure it's snug.
See? Soft, but still has lumbar support. It's the same procedure for the pillow, too. Just covering a foam roller with a piece of scrap fabric. Alright, we're in the home stretch. Final assembly of all the bed pieces. First, we're going to glue the fan piece to one of the headboard pieces. It looks nice, doesn't it? Using the horizontal popsicle stick on our headboard as a brace, we are gluing the bed frame to, to rest upon it and doing the same for the other side. All right, construction is done. Let's paint it. I chose two shades of green this time to match my bedding. Once dry, everything is done. I even cut a little square of fabric for a quilt. Doesn't it look great? If you make this project or something inspired by it, be sure to tag me. I'm excited to see what you come up with. Thanks for watching.